What's up, everybody? It's your favorite personal Marvel Disappointments favorite nerd, and today we are looking at the Make Toys Endgame, and the reason why I say that is because I wasn't crazy about that movie. That's neither here nor there, no need to bore you with the details of that. But honestly, I got news for you, like, I think I'm out of the Marvel Hot Toys game as a result of it. Like, it was a huge turnoff for me. I, it's not that I think it's a bad movie inherently, I describe it as a great movie that I don't enjoy. But enough about that. Let's move on to this guy. This is all known to me from Jeremy B. First and foremost, thank you, dude. I appreciate the chance to look at this guy, for one, because of the widespread kind of QC rumors regarding him. For Two, because many people have asked that I do look at him, so I feel like I'm doing the community a service and I appreciate the opportunity to do so. So thank you. And now that we've got all that out of the way, let's start with accessories. He comes with four additional faces. One, uh, I heard they're not gonna release the Conehead's face. One, ooh, I heard they might release the Conehead's face. One, uh, sounds like they're releasing the Conehead's face. And one, I finally received my Conehead's face. All are decoed the same way with metallic red on the eyes and metallic silver on the face and then black paint inside of the mouth, I think, or it could just be natural shadows. So we have our two null rays with the armature here. This can come off first of all, this can separate, and then this armature here will move. It's just a little tight and uh, it would help if I had a little bit of leverage, but yeah, there you go. And then this will move also for the sake of articulation. That'll peg into his arm and you can manipulate it as such. Those will fit into either hole on either side of the wing. He comes with two smaller tips, so to speak. This is to kind of emulate the G1 toy look, I believe. So what you would do is take your no ray, remove the longer piece and insert the shorter piece like you could do with the G1 toy. He comes with the two larger kind of missiles that he uses for all mode. By the way, don't mind the white paint. I'm working on a diorama. I'm almost done. Um, you know, they, that you usually, you only had these with the G1 toy, and he has these in the alt mode in the cartoon, I believe. These two can also peg into the arm using the same peg and hole system if you would like. Those will fit into either hole on the underside of the wing, but this is how they kind of recommend the configuration with the shorter missiles and then the longer ones. But I will have you know stress marks and that's not the only hole that's having them so to speak i'll take this one out over here that's got some as well that's two from the same sort of design flaw so that's got to get it you know what i'm talking about stress marks around your wings stress marks around your things if you have a lot of stress marks when i sing he also comes with the Starscream replacement or the back filler wing pieces, which I know this is a big deal to some. It doesn't really bother me, but he comes with them. And gimmicks wise, they have the landing gear one, two, three, and they just fold out and fold down. And let's look at the figure. So the head, we have a decent enough face sculpt on there. You do have a couple additional ones, so that's nice. It's not the best I've ever seen. Something about the lips seems a little off, and then the face is painted silver, and this might just be a separate piece of glossy plastic, but I can't tell. Either way, it looks good because you have the kind of flat plastic, the metallic paint, and then the gloss plastic, so it's enough breakup where it kind of makes it visually interesting, so I'm on to that. Yellow and red paint there, sharp as attack and done well. The head itself is on a ball peg per usual. You get up to there, down to there, the swivel, confused dog look, etc. Proportions wise, I do feel like the head is a little small for the body. This is something that the Seekers have kind of struggled with throughout. It's not the biggest deal in the world. I'd rather the head be too little than too big because, you know, it, it adds to the proportions of a heroic look. So don't get me wrong. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. I'm just pointing it out because we're talking about it. So. We have a waist swivel, no issues there. And we have a hinge here that can get you an ab crunch over or back, but it's gonna destroy the sculpt, but you might be able to fake it for a picture. This piece here is loosey goosey. It just slides um, whether you want it to or not. Something to keep in mind, and I don't know if it's his copy. I know there's a lot of QC reports out there, so I'm just reporting them as I see them, little problems that I'm coming across. We do have black paint in here and in here, and then the silver paint on the chest, which looks good enough. We have the shoulders. Universal joints that get you out to 90 degrees and around. They're both tensioned. Bicep swivel. Double jointed elbow for the full run. Wrist swivel and a slight hinge up. Then we also have the fingers on a base pin knuckle. The index finger is individually articulated with a secondary pin also at the secondary knuckle. We have universals for hips. We have hip skirts that can get out of the way. 
Once again, tensioned, once again, a little loose. So out to the sides, no problem. Forward and back, this tail piece will lift up. They, these are ratcheted, like a soft ratchet, for the full Monty and then the full Van Dam. So no issues there other than uh, the tension, but I know a lot of people like that so they can kind of control the angle a little bit better. I get that. So these wings here on the back, they do have a tendency to flip down with their own weight, but these gray pieces do kind of keep them compact. Uh, I think by and large, well enough. We have a thigh swivel, a little squeaky there, but that's okay, you know, I don't mind that. We have the purple, yellow, and red paint and white paint, and that is done tremendously. We have a double jointed knee that gets you the full run. We have gray plastic, blue plastic, and then silver metallic. Gunmetal probably an ankle rocker Nothing really for an ankle tilt up. You do get an ankle tilt down and There he is from the back obviously I took all the accessories off so that we could kind of look at it without bumping into stuff But there he is from the back clean it up. I think there's DX9's breakdown fans toys reflector and MMC's vortex three masterpiece figures from three third-party companies Hopefully that gives you an idea He's the same size as the other seekers So you should probably know what you're dealing with here But just in case you didn't hope this helps and of course the comparison that everybody wants to see These two and I think that you know, I'm, I'm not a fan of the hyper tune look You know, I like the tune look with some added details and a little bit of sauce on it, so to speak But I don't think there's any comparison here the make toys kills the Takara not that the Takara was a hard one to kill He's kind of like easy prey, but it's it's a slaughterhouse all four of them back together Joel Royce Joe and King Crook slaughterhouse.com the whole pig there's no real comparison. The Takara one looks like trash next to it. I, I'll be keeping my Takara because I just don't care enough about these characters. They're sitting in the background of my shelf anyway. I paid too much for them and the secondary market for them is despicable. So, you know, I made my bed so I'm going to sleep in it. But if I could do it all over again, I would have gotten the MIG toys. Only gamble with the MIG toys is whether or not they're going to actually get the other two out. You know, I, all signs are pointing that they will. But it's, you know, until they're in your hand, it's always a gamble, right? Look. I hemmed and hawed over whether or not to show this transformation again, and I figured it was worth doing once because there is a couple little changes in regards to the engineering with the wings and such. Plus, a big topic of this conversation is QC, so it's important to see how he holds up. So, in short, we're going to show it one last time. So, collapse the bicep, fold the wrist forward, and you want to do that on both sides. You've got to work on getting the chest disconnected so you can open up these pieces and also detach the middle pieces from the canopy or should I say can of peas on the back extend these pieces up and then you can use this forward motion here in order to kind of raise up <laughs> the entire structure of the innards and what I did notice and this is one of the reasons why I think it's worth going over and I got to find his head at some point that little fella just rolled away from me but is that uh, they did away with the c-clip so that's nice nice little bonus all right then take his flank pieces and fold actually you can extend the waist up now it'll give you a little bit more working room so extend them up wrap it around on top of itself and then hinge this bottom piece down and you're going to want to do that on both sides so up and then down and you want to make sure this is as tight as possible all right now you want to take these side panels here rotate them up collapse them against the body and then bring the arms down, fold them in, and that gets them out of the way. At that point, you can bring these down and peg them in. Then you can collapse this back down, slide the waist piece up, and tad them into the forearms. Then you got to deal with all of this up here. So start maneuvering this piece and then angling the head back so that you can clear the cone underneath this gray piece. So this is all new, right, in terms of, you know, different molding and such. And it's just a matter of getting the angle right, and the head is going to want to pop off. So we're just trying to get it in there. There we go. All right. 
this piece has to spin around and do a thousand little tricks and flips and such but we got to spin this and it's tight and it's even greased up you can see they greased it up but just bear with me good grief is tight and it's also you know you got to maneuver everything around but mm, okay now we can bring this piece back and you just have to straighten all this stuff out to the best of your ability and I'm not gonna bore you with the details of that but I'm just gonna get you in the right position so you want to make sure all this stuff is nice and straight flip this around that'll fill in that space this is not the real cockpit right so this comes down and sits over that but you got to get this to collapse right there you go and then this piece comes in and fills that out and then you just got to make sure you got it all nice and tight which i won't bore you with now we'll deal with the upper wings you can collapse these gray pieces around bring the flaps down it's so funny this one's been they've, they've both been wanting to flap down the entire time now it's time for them to come down they don't want to budge it's like my kids all right so this tab here if you can see it has to get into that slot and look i'll be honest with you i am scared to push it but there it is luckily the uh i feel like the mustard plastic is a little more giving so there it is and then take your wings and extend them up and they'll tab into the upper part of the gray and now we just got to do the legs so open this piece here bring that up and get it out of the way get these wings out of the way we're going to combine our wars this down and re-secure it same for this side and much like you know every masterpiece sort of seeker attempt a lot of this stuff is done in the ninth inning as far as kind of cleaning it up and then bring this up and then just start cleaning the back of that up tabbing the legs in together etc etc the, these things you're supposed to spin in or out a certain way and then collapse the feet feet all right then you can slide up your side wings and they'll meet hopefully this piece and this piece as they slide and then this tab will go oh shit you can't see any of that so slide this piece up this piece and this piece will meet and then this tab will fit into that slot in theory so let's go for it. there you go there you go easy i like it when it's easy so to speak all right same here there you go. All right, I'll get it cleaned up. We'll take a look at it. Actually, no, we won't because I got one more step. So one here, one here, one there, one there. Now I'll get it cleaned up and we'll take a look at it. And there it is. And I think it works fairly well. I have the weapons in them, as you can see, so to speak. That definitely adds something. He uh, doesn't really roll, right, because they're not really proper wheels. But... Yeah, I think it looks good enough. You know, it's it's kind of what we expect. I, I think it would be more bizarre if it didn't work, right? Because they just had to kind of engineer the wings in. And they I think they did so seamlessly. I know these side wings up on the... I'm not sure if that's a thing for uh, for Dirge in the cartoons. That might bother some people. It doesn't bother me. I actually prefer it. I think it gives it a little extra character. But yeah, I think it looks good. The sculpt looks good. These pieces aren't sitting quite right on mine. That might be because I'm just not... Uh, slamming stuff in as far as I can so to speak because it's not mine it doesn't belong to me and I'd rather not break it if possible underside looks clean yeah I don't have any issues with this I think it's good to go and there it is with tiger tracks
Final thoughts wise, let's talk about the negatives. The pelvis piece is loose. It shouldn't be, in my opinion. Putting the missiles in creates stress marks on the plastic, and that's a problem as well. The head pops off when you look at it left, and to be fair, it pops off sometimes when you look at it right. I think that the majority of the issues with stuff not being loose, stuff being a little too tight, etc., is probably due to the use of the mold. That would be my guess. I'm far from an expert on mold degradation and what that really comes from and how to combat it and all those sorts of things, but it would be my guess. But honestly, that's all I've really got in regards to negatives. And to be fair, I have a lot of positives. The sculpt is tremendous. The materials feel good. Probably could use a little bit more paint if we were going to be nitpicky, but there is enough differentiation in plastics that it does soften the blow in that regard. If you guys really want to see a comparison with this and the Takara, I'd be happy to do it. I just think that it would be really difficult for the Takara to seriously compete. But you know, I've been wrong before, so let me know about that. The articulation works well, but we knew that already. I I know there's been complaints and widespread issues regarding some of the QC. It's possible that this guy just got a good one, but uh, I'm not really having a whole ton of issues with mine, or the one I'm looking at rather. So I can't speak to any sort of major issue regarding QC. Yeah, some of this stuff is a little looser. I would imagine that some of that has to do with the mold being used over and over again. They did listen to us. They retooled some of it for the wings and such. And while they were working on that, they went ahead and fixed some of the issues we had, like the C-clip and so forth. So I think we got to give them credit for that. All in all, I think this is a pretty good piece. I think it's certainly better than the Takara offering. And while I don't find it to be an exceptionally exciting release, that's really not what we're judging here, is it? So all in all, I think they did a pretty good job and I can give it a recommend. Be mindful of the stress marks and you should be fine. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.